All right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is Kluze Trading Frank. It's approximately 8, 10 p.m., a midweek Wednesday strategic market webinar. We generally tend to do three webinar broadcasts or videocasts during the week, one on Sunday evening at 8 p.m., 8 or 8.30 p.m., Wednesday evening. And uh, basically, we do, uh, majorly we do two unless there is a need to, we do three. Uh, depending on the volatility in the market. So Sunday evening and Wednesday evening. So it keeps people uh, breast on um, everything to do with the markets and uh, gives us a chance to review and reflect on, um, on, um, uh, 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 on the week. Um, so that's where we are right now. Uh, full disclosure, this is purely for financial education, not for solicitation or advice. These sessions are recorded and uploaded to the Clueless A Trading YouTube channel. Uh, quick uh, reminder, please follow us on YouTube uh, to listen to all the free broadcasts that I put in there, the video cast, very strategic market insights and stock insights. Um, and of course, our Clueless A Trading Instagram channel, which is getting a pretty nice reception. Follower account is growing. Certainly like you all to pass the word and go in there uh, whenever you can and uh, click like uh, likes on uh, multiple highlights of trades that we do here at Clueless A Trading. On that note, welcome. So a couple of things before I dive into, um, uh, dive into the charts, uh, extremely important, uh, which are very relevant to all traders, active or inactive. So I'm going to start by saying... Um, Trading bumps. How about that for a better choice of words? So one of the things that uh, many traders don't realize is we, depending on the type of stock that we're trading, we are basically day trading against, we're not necessarily day trading, we're swing trading a lot too, but we're day trading against hedge funds. So what does that mean? It simply means that we see that big spike, for example, which delivers a very fat profit, right? You know, you're, you're basically uh, day trading against hedge funds, um, which are running extremely, extreme fast algos. So that's number one. Number two, there are algo HFT shops, which are not hedge funds. These are the non-HF, non-hedge funds. It's very important to keep these things in mind. Hedge funds, uh, which are running buy-sell programs. all day okay these are these are more the micro shops these are the smaller shops um, and they are basically day trading like monsters then you have institutional trade desks which are basically a uh, 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 are the more of the larger footprints which come in and run a whole bunch of algos and you can see a whole sector lift we see that every single day okay so bottom line is that when we are doing this what we have to keep in mind as traders that my charts are very precise but the key is that when it hits that intermediate levels whether it be the upper end the highest upper end or whether it 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 it, it, it meets the middle uh, middle part of the move you have to take you have to be in a position in the first 30 minutes in the market to take your profits netflix prime example okay stock runs up like a monster like a monster yesterday and today but if you didn't take profits on netflix 
at a level which I had clearly shown. Let me pull up Netflix. It's right here. One second. Netflix, Netflix. And it's a very defined move. There you go. Okay. So if you hadn't taken. So here we are. So we are Netflix buyers in this zone. And that we are Netflix buyers in this zone. Netflix ramps up big time. This is um, an hourly chart. Big time hits exactly, exactly the upper end of the range, close to that gap fill, which the stock, depending on market conditions, it will go. If the market completely breaks down for whatever reason, it's obviously going to take a scenic detour down here and then attempt to move higher. Remember, no stock, uh, very few stocks move independent of that particular sector in the market. Yeah, certain stocks on certain types of news like Tesla. Tesla doesn't give a, you know, what about whether China's, you know, doing this or this. It moves on its own thing. But it also moves with the overall market. But in many, in many cases, which we today is a prime example, it basically just does what it needs to do. And it's a very technical stock. My charts are extremely precise on that. I mean, I can't even, you know, all you have to do is look and trade my, my arrows, to be honest with you. And uh, you got to do what you need to do. But what I'm getting at with this is, so if the sell, pro, if, if, if when you pop up and you, you're up 100%, 200% from a swing trade or 50% from a late buy yesterday, whatever the case may be, or the day before, then you have to take it. Because these day trading algos, which are there, okay? These day trading algos that, you're, that are running, they are up maybe 100, 200, 300,000 bucks. And they're going to just slam it. They're going to slam the, the sell program because they are moving. They are basically uh, uh, looking at this chart. I, mean, I don't know. You know, they, they, they're basically looking at the pattern and you're on the upper end of the range. And um, one second. It's the upper end of the range and they're going to hit it just the way they did a couple of days ago, last week. So. This is what I'm getting at. We, we are we are basically trading against these machines. And the other thing that I'm running into, well, I've been doing this for a long time. I'm really don't, nothing's kind of new to me, to be honest with you. For a lot of you, it is new to and new, and that's the reason why you're with the service. You're here to learn some of the things and that I have experienced. You know, this is really nothing new. So you can clearly see here what the range is. Upper end of the range, there is going to be selling. Or if there was a breakout and there was no big sell program that came into the uh, NASDAQ or the, uh, the, uh, from the, within the first half hour, um, then you would have hit the 385 level. That would have been overshoot. Whichever the case, you, would, you are almost obligated that you want to sell there. If you want to be emotionally stupid and think this thing's going to run up to 395 in one single soup, well, it doesn't happen like that. It doesn't happen like that, guys. All right? So live and learn. You learn from your own own, own um, sort of mistakes if you get too greedy on holding something. So it was a fantastic trade, and now the stock is basically between 377. With you could you could definitely need to sell those and then buy some higher strike calls. Buy a little bit of it because that's called scaling in. You buy a little bit of it, and um, I'm basically just sharing some basic trade dynamics. All right, trade, trading mechanics. So you don't want to take your old money that you made on this. Take the whole loot and put it up there. A lot of retail traders do that. And I think that's plain stupid. But if the stock went, they'd feel like, you know, superheroes. But that's not the way, in my opinion, you know, things should be done. So you want to take a little bit of your profits and you want to buy a couple of, you know, one or two calls and leave it in there. If it goes, it goes. Or if it pulls back, it hit exactly the level that I, that, that, that's been shown on my chart repeatedly. And you want to basically cost average. Because that sell program basically brought the stock down from 377 all the way down to 3, 360. 17 points. Just gave, gave back and, and, and it came back. Nothing's wrong with it. That's just the, the mechanics of you know, algorithmic high frequency trading boxes, trading patterns. All right? This is not a fundamental game here, guys. All right? Fundamentally, the company is great. Fundamentally, five years from now, Netflix is going to be a $1,000 stock in my opinion. They barely scratched the surface of global uh, global audience. So this is not a fundamental play. You're trading it to make 100, 200 percent 
60%, 80% on your money, which is humongous numbers. So that's it. So first and foremost, that's these are the reasons why there is so much volatility and vortex right at the opening in the market, especially if something gaps open or if something gaps down. And these are the ones, these are the guys who first run the programs really fast because they're going to take profits fast. I take profits fast. And then, then I regroup. And then the second batch of programs that come in, they go back and forth all day long. These are the non-hedge fund running buy-sell programs all day. These guys are active all throughout the day too. And then you have the institutional trade desk that basically put in the big, big buy orders. And you can see that movement start. Banking was today, uh, the, the financials, uh, the industrials, John Deere went through the roof. And, uh, and and then you got a late day buy program that came in into the text. And I uh, go ahead during the day and I notify you guys on what I see. Um, so you guys are somewhat knowledgeable about you know, what, what's going on. Saying all that, these are the problems. These are in execution issues. This is this is the biggest issue that I run into. Execution risks, i.e. buying and selling. On the sell part, let's say I have a call at two. It ramps up, it opens up at seven dollars. Let's say it opens up at six bucks. The problem is because of these very fast moving machines and everything that I explained to you guys in the last couple of minutes, the prices don't stick there. They, they literally move instantaneously. So you're trying to sell this thing here at six, it's slipping down to five, sell program comes in, it's at four. So all of a sudden, instead of a three bagger, you're up double, you're trying to sell it. You're trying to like squeeze in the middle, whatever you're trying to do, they drop it down to three. And believe me, this happens every day. In other words, these are literally, they literally stay here anywhere from 40 seconds, the prices, execution risk, okay? 40 seconds to two minutes if you're lucky. If it's a very popular stock, if it's a very, you know, it's one of the, the, one of the more, you know, like the Facebooks, the Apples and stuff like that. They literally just run it up and you gotta you gotta be selling as they're running it higher. That's where you get the best execution prices. If you're getting to, looking to sell pretty much at the top based on the charts, you are not gonna get that. And they because the big programs will come in, slam them, and all of a sudden, instead of being profitable, you might be in the negative. Am I right or wrong? Do you guys run into these issues or you guys never run into these issues? Twice today. Okay, there you go. So there's no way around it, by the way. So like we say at Clueless State Trading, we're not into you know making up stories. No fluff. There's no way around it. If you're so what happens in that type of case, if you are if you have a swing trade and you have multiple days left, it's not this Friday's, or even if it's this Friday's, you still have a couple of days left in the lottos. Lottos are lottos. You know, Apple could be up four bucks on, on quad witching on Friday. I've seen that happen way too many times. Way too many times. But if you have, for example, I was showing a lot of September 28 trikes, then you have multiple days left. So you want to, as long as the charts are cooperating, doesn't matter whether they sell in the first five minutes, whether they, you didn't get an execution first thing off the bat, you want to basically sit there or add a little bit more, depending, you know, on what you can do. And you want to basically swing it towards next week. That's the only way to do it. Do it. Because unless, look, I got 14 screens in front of me. I have difficulty in execution at times for no fault of mine because things are so fast. So I can imagine when somebody is, 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 is a part-time trader what they're going through. But like they say, life and trading, it's not fair. Like the old saying, you know, life isn't fair. You want fair? Go to a fairground. That's just the way things we have to deal with. So I'm just pointing these very obvious things out as all, you know, to my members and anyone else who's going to be listening to this video cast. So execution risk on the buy side also is um, 
One second. So execution risk, that was a sell side. Trying to get the price you're looking for and it keeps on running away from you down. So execution risk on the buy side is also the same. Okay, the speed. Now, primarily on SPX, RUT, not as much on the spies because, you know, they have, um, you know, they're cheaper. So I'm going to stick to the SPX, the RUT. Okay, these are the two heavyweight options. These are the heavyweight options, right? They're the ones higher price and they're the ones which basically, you know, go from two to six on a, on a, 15 second move on the market. So these are the heavyweights. So I find that on the, on, as I'm putting in the buys, I'm looking at a call, for example, um, a weekly call at two, at two bucks. It runs away from me. 250, 260, three. So what I generally do is I don't scale in all at one time. I don't try to, I mean, the minute I'm trying to put in a limit order, they take they, they they're raising the the bid on me. You guys know that. So I'll buy I'll buy a few here. It's going higher. I'll add a few more, and then I have a certain limit based on my charts where I'm not going to buy anymore. And then within 15 minutes or less, especially on a flash move higher, just the way we get flash crashes, we get big flash rallies. We know that. So this thing is sitting at four bucks, I'll sell it. So there's a, there's a lot of execution risk when you're trying to buy the entry prices too, because they're just constantly moving it away from you. And the way I've learned, there's an old saying on, on Wall Street, limits, limits limit your profits. It's true, because if you're doing a fast momentum trade, you gotta just jump in. That's it, you just gotta jump in. So if they bring it down a little bit more, well, you just gotta deal with it. Because these machines know when the orders are coming in really hard and they're just going to move it up against you. And you guys know that too. So these are things that, you know, we have to deal with from an execution risk point all the time. So the key thing with this very sharp 9.30 to 9.45 to 10 o'clock volatility especially on gap up, market gap up open, gap ups, okay, is hedge funds, retail traders like us, all fighting to get out, get the profits, right? So, so that's number one. So what these machines will do a lot of the times is they will open it, they will drop it, and then they'll run it within the next 35 minutes. I've seen that happen a lot. So here you are. You didn't get a chance to tell the opening. You somehow got out here. You made 40% instead of having, let's say, 100% plus on your, on your calls. Stock opened up nicely. Then you get out, and then you don't, get back in again of course if you know if you're if you're not direct in front of the screen but i try to alert as much as possible but i but i can't alert on a five minute basis and it turns then you feel like crap because you could have made 150 percent that trade this happens you know this happens a lot and you just have to deal with it there's no set rule that says all oh, the algos are exactly going to come in there it depends on the stock and what they want to do even they're confused. They're just going back and forth. So this type of execution risk, taking profits at you know at a gap up open, earnings winners that we have, it's happened to me on earnings winners where I they were it shot up, fell, and I'm like, all right, I'm getting out. I have you know maybe one or two contracts on those things because I buy the basket right, and then I see it run big time. So I tend to jump in and run it. We call them reversal trades. You guys know that. And those reversal trades are very uh, pay very handsomely too. So that's it. You know, these things, there's no set rule to it. 
and you just have to be react you have to be proactive you have to be reactive and you have to have access you know you need to basically spare time in the first hour of trading so that you can you know you, you can you can do the right thing all right so let's move on let me get out of this here okay um let's get into the let's get get to look at some technicals as to what's going on the markets are in fine shape everything that i've been talking about is uh, is there the spx the spies did extremely well and this is where we are so i'm going to start off with the shorter term charts this is your 15 minute lots of zigzags we had this if you guys remember as a head and shoulder going back all the way to all the way to uh the 28th of uh, august time flies 28th of August. So um, this was your left shoulder at that time. It still is. Left shoulder. Here was the right shoulder. We broke out of that with a vengeance yesterday. Right through there. Bang. Now yesterday was a very pivotal day because we had the China tariffs put in, the second round put in. Of course, it hasn't been implemented, but you know they were, they were announced. And the markets reversed like a monster. Um, and I had to watch this very carefully, like a monster at around, uh, uh, right pretty much at the open after dipping down. But overall, they, the, the charts were showing that, um, and I had mentioned this, if you guys remember, sell the rumor and buy the news. And that's exactly what happened. And this was very pivotal. This was a breath thrust, which started off the day before on the 17th. This was the 18th. The Chinese $200 billion tariff went through. Markets basically, there's a lot of stuff going on underneath the surface that I don't have time really now to explain. This has to do with the trade negotiations, not just the surface stuff, all game theory things that I talked about last webinar. So we're very actively speaking to the Chinese, but no one's talking about it. Steve Mnuchin, our Treasury Secretary, seems to be missing in action. He's obviously doing some good stuff because he's been quiet. You notice nobody's seen him. So for all you know, he might be in China. Um, so this move was very pivotal. And it started off at 930 and went berserk. The markets went berserk. Great day. Now, um, keep in mind that these type of moves generally tend to happen because you have a monster short squeeze. Monster. There are obviously a large number of hedge funds and retail investors and institutions who are probably short saying, that's it, the market's going to drop 400 points now that it's gone you know, overboard and, and that the tariffs have been implemented. So they all got squeezed. When these macro funds get squeezed, you get a move like this. It's really as simple as that. So going back to the head and shoulder stuff, uh, and I've, I've uh, printed all this. Uh, I've shown published all this stuff yesterday. We have uh, we have basically blown, broken out over the right shoulder, which is a good thing, right? Remember, there's your neckline. We broke out of that. This is the this is the other neckline. On an inverted head and shoulder, that was a that was a, the the first neckline. This is the big one. Here's your right shoulder. Here's your left shoulder. I don't want to get into this basic stuff anymore and, and waste anyone's time. People should understand this stuff by now. And uh, and we blew through it. We came down to test the right shoulder today at uh, at around 7:45 this morning, right? Which reaches down a little bit, and uh, we retested it. Remember the green dotted line is are the shoulders. And um, what did we do? We took off from there. We took off from there. So patterns, these tactical patterns are critically important and you can clearly see how accurate they are. So let's move on to the one hour chart, which is cleaner, easier to see. And I think uh, um, somebody doesn't wanna go crazy on the 15 minute chart, leave that to me uh, to, to notify people if I see anything really dramatic. But, um, this is a um, this is a very good looking chart. I mean, what can I say? It's just good looking. It's basically a Texas bullhorn pattern. If anyone knows, you know, 
what it is. It's basically a W pattern, a large one. There. This was the flash crash. And then see you later, right? This was the flash crash on the 17, and then just see you later. Then you have a, you know, yeah, you can you can zoom in and uh, and and look at uh, 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 micro patterns and macro patterns. I'm looking at the macro pattern here. So aside from this flash crash on the on the China news on the 17, took all that back. It's basically a cup and handle here. It's a V-shaped cup handle broke out, and at least technically speaking. The markets do want to go kiss that uh, 29. This is obviously E minis, um, the futures, but the, they do want to test the 29.30 level, in my opinion. That's roughly about 23 points from where we are, which translates into roughly 120 points in the Dow from here before we get fully short intermediate term overbought. Now, that if we get another 120 points from here, we will be at around 26,500 and change on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And the markets like round numbers, right? So 20, even numbers, 26,500, we take a pause, in my opinion, or we can blow through it for all I know. So that's the macro pattern. Nothing really more to see here. In between, this is a rising wedge. Upper end of the wedge is 26, 29, 24. That converts into 29.30 or so on the S&P 500, right there. And this can happen very, very quickly, as quickly as tomorrow morning. Now, once it gets to the upper end of the wedge, what happens? We get a consolidation pullback. The same old story over and over again. Nothing new here. So that's the trader's roadmap intermediate to swing and day traders can follow this too because it's extremely precise with all the lines and everything that are put in place even with arrows to facilitate the understanding and reaction time of all traders because this means that if you're going to break 2907 the chances are you're going to fall rather quickly that's why we have a red arrow here and time to time many of our traders do their own trades shorting this by going long just by using my charts so, you know, feel free to do that if you have time because all the levels are put in place. So if I'm not reacting to it, I'm not putting out a short on the SPIs uh, or, or the SPX, it doesn't mean you can't do it. Feel free to do it. Now, this is the daily chart of the E-minis. I know there's a lot of levels here put in place, but if you look at it, we're right there. We are right there. That is a very powerful technical, and you can see it. Here's your here's your wide channel. Let's look at the bigger picture. Here's your wide channel. Upper end of this channel is 2960. There's your wide channel. My channel has basically kept the entire, my charts. Now listen very carefully, guys. Clueless aid trading tactical charts are the pillars of the U.S. financial system, all right? It's a joke, guys, all right? Because the markets follow my charts, period. Without clueless aid trading tactical charts, you all would be in a depression financially because these charts are the pillars of the U.S. financial markets. I'm just kidding. What I'm trying to say in simple English is look how precise these charts are. Every single time, we, uh, many of you thought, or a non, you know, a more of an emotional type trader was not really understanding the charts and not looking at them, but it was all over. It engaged certain inflection points, whether it be a consolidation channel, whether it be the megaphone pattern, it engaged each of these levels and then went the other way just when it looked like it was all over like oh my god look we're coming down all it did was retest the gap retest the breakout levels this is the breakout level there's your other neckline breakout level 
So just when you thought it was all over, my charts came in to save the day. In simple English, these are extremely precise. Each of these points have been engaged and will be engaged on the upper end and the lower end. So because I construct this, obviously, I see it very clearly. And I'm sure many of you get to see it very clearly, too, because I try to make it as simple as possible. The reason why it looks so busy with the support lines and the resistance lines and stuff like that, guys, is simply because I am trying to show you the very exact levels so that you can trade better. Does everyone understand that part? Yes? No? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, because, uh, thank you, Lisa. Because the other thing is sometimes I want to have more cleaner charts. I do. But, um, and sometimes I do show much more cleaner charts. But the clean means that you guys won't know where the level of engagement on the buy and sell side, entry and exits would be if I didn't draw these exact specific lines. So that's all I'm getting at. I can draw this cleaner chart without any of the lines, and all you're going to see is some channels just going higher. But you won't know, like when you have those quick volatility moves during the day, where we can engage and where we're going to bounce from. So, so far, everything is intact. Are we getting overbought? Sure we are. Sure we are. Bull markets tend to remain more overbought than oversold, as in duration. Bear markets do the opposite. During the bear market between 2008-2009, um, we stayed oversold for weeks. And in the bull market, you can stay overbought on the longer term chart for weeks and weeks. So that's just the way it is. Um, so this one looks good. We are we we uh, we tested the uh, the SPX tested today. Uh, 20 year high is 29.16.50, as in the closing price. We tested. Uh, we uh, went to 29.12.36, almost there. So at this point, technically speaking, it looks like we want to break out of this channel here. Uh, this is certainly to me uh, looking like a large. Well, there are lots of cups and handles, right? One, two. This is the one I'm looking at. So if that's the case, we have room to move here into the 2930, 2940 level. So that's it. The broader picture is still projecting higher. Keep in mind that the 28, um, that the 2864 level on the E-minis is where things completely break down towards the low 2800s, which we retested several, several times in the month of August. So we'll see. Now here's other risk with in technical charts. Technicals alone are not nirvana, right? They're not 100% right, but they're definitely very right, primarily because the machines are running the market. So it's not that I'm just looking at technicals. I'm analyzing uh, uh, the outside environment. I'm analyzing the political and the economic news that's coming out, looking at my charts for the roadmap. There are true technicians, very smart people, who just, just they just block out everything that's happening out there. They just follow the charts. I don't believe in that because I think you have to have a mix in your model of fundamental, macroeconomic, political, and you know, uh, political and economic news, and see the reaction in the markets and follow the technicals. And I think to me that's worked best for me. Not just blindly say, okay, this is wave one of my new this and that. You know, these hardcore technicians, uh, serious hardcore technicians say, and I don't even understand them half the time. Um, I don't want to close out, uh, close the world out and just say, okay, that's it. Charts are saying this. Charts are saying a lot, but I also take the outside environment into consideration. So now let's move on to the S&P charts. So this is your S&P chart on the one hour. This one's much easier to read. Have to adjust the lines at the end of the evening every day, just to some of the lines, not these macro lines. So this is looking good. Now uh, this is a one-hour chart. Lots of moving parts, but so far it looks like it wants to get to the upper end of the wedge, which is again 
the testing the highs, 2917 or so. And um, and possibly a breakout. On the pullback, if we get a sudden pullback, we can, uh, anywhere below 2900, uh, the market gets in trouble. I have arrows here. If we break 2982, we're going to fall into this previous gap where we moved around quite a bit before we broke out. This is another gap here. So again, the effects on individual stocks are obviously far more amplified when, uh, when, when these candles expand to the downside. So keep in mind that use this as a proxy to lower exposure to the long end on your, on your, on your trading book if you, if you see these type of moves. Now, this type of move doesn't always connotate that you're going to completely fall apart, but it generally is an early warning sign if you see a candle of this magnitude, which is roughly 29 or 7, which is roughly 15 to 20 points. Uh, you know that there is going to be a, a, some further selling, and of course, if the if the uh, stochastics are kind of midway here and not completely oversold, then you know uh, they will come in for another uh, sell program. But because the machines move so fast these days, sometimes I've tried to short these type of candles and I've been burned. So I try to do it in small amounts because if there, there are way too many shorts out there in the market, that's the problem. Okay, and when you have that much of a short cushion, they keep on getting blasted as the market keeps on moving higher. That's why you constantly keep on getting these short squeeze rallies. So I hope you guys understand this concept, right? Way too many shorts. It's cushioning any type of me reasonable, meaningful drop in the market. Sector stocks can drop. Yep, techs get hit one day. Boeing gets hit one day. Um, financials get hit one day. So there's sector rotation going on. But aside from that, overall market completely falling apart. Um, we haven't really, you know, we did see, we did see that type of stuff, especially on the trade thing, but uh, on a straight line down, no. So anyway, my read is at this point from what I can see, um, there are no guarantees on this, but the high probability move is that we retest at least the highs and then we see what the market wants to do. Keep in mind, this is, uh, uh, this is um, weekly options expiration. Um, weekly options expiration, quadruple witching. You tend to get a very bullish move into the first part of Friday, and then Friday becomes a real mess because all kinds of portfolio adjustments, all that stuff. It also happens to be the week prior to um, the end of the second quarter. Can you believe it? September is the end of the second quarter. I'm sorry, third quarter. What am I saying? So you're going to see a lot more movement. Now, window dressing, I, I, just generally speaking, continues till about the 26th. T plus three, remember? So the settlement date for the last day of the month is, no, it's actually 25th because uh, 29th and 30th are, are, the, are the weekend. So if, some, if, a, if a trade is executed on the 25th, uh, then T plus three is 26, 27, 28. Settlement date is the 28th. Everyone understand that part? So bottom line is that sometime between the 25th and 26th, whatever markups they want to do on certain individual stocks, I think are going to be done. Doesn't mean the whole market's going to fall. I'm just giving you an idea that that's, you know, that's, that's going to be, that could be the height of the window dressing or portfolio markups in simple English showing the big, big winners for the quarter in their books kind of borderline illegal, right? You don't own the stock, but you just want to show it at the end of the on the end of the quarter so it shows up on your quarterly report that goes out to mom and pop. So that's what happens all the time. Um, so I'm I, I'm tracking this chart very carefully because honestly speaking, the market is insanely volatile um, almost every day. And uh, in no rhyme or reason sectors are getting hit back and forth. So um, it's a lot more management, let's just put it that way. So that's your one hour chart. I follow, I track it very closely. You know, you can replicate this chart, use your own. But so far, uh, still looking the upside is uh, good to go. Nothing here showing me that we are going to have an imminent drop. But who knows? Wake up in the morning, futures could be down 20 points on China going berserk and going nuts. They've been kind of holding back on going nuts, right? You guys noticed that? So what if they go really nuts?
and uh, that's going to be really ugly. But those are the risks we have to live with. Let's look at the daily chart. The daily chart is very clean. Uh, technically speaking, you can see what's going on. Here's your pre uh, uh, um, ATH, all-time high, roughly around the 29, well, going to be exact. Yeah, right there, like around 29.17, 29, it's actually right there. There you go. All right. So you can see here what's going on. Let me zoom in. Big drop here. Looked like we we're going to come and retest the 28.76 level. We didn't. We held my Andrew's pitchfork. And there, we had a big reversal day yesterday. So we're almost getting down there where we would bounce from. Or if we broke that, we'd be gone, coming down to 28.51. It wouldn't feel that good for sure. So if you notice, this was the the Trump, uh, the Trump 200000000000 billion tra tariff drop on the 17th right there. If you notice, right there. Looked like it was going to go all the way down here. But then come the clueless aid trading charts and save the whole world and the U.S. Fin uh, economy, right? Just kidding. So, boom, turns around. Instead of coming down and here and turning around, so all the shorts who shorted heavy on that uh, on the 16th, on the 16th you can see that large uh, uh, red candle. Sorry, that was the 18th on the 17th on the 17th. My apologies. They got blasted the following day. Technically speaking, that was a bullish engulfing candle, and today was the follow through. So that's technically very positive. You know, like I said, it was a very seminal moment that the U.S. financial market decided to say, okay, we get it, and we're just going to take things higher. And um, so at this point, this is the short-term target. If we blow past that, which is possible, which is possible, then I have my next arrow at around 29.45. Well, you can always adjust it somewhere around 29.30 or so. Is, is, is the next move. But this sudden move here, just so you all understand, is billions of dollars on the short side getting covered and squeezed because they're just going nuts. They're just they're like, oh my God, this market was supposed to come down here. I know they're all betting against it and then bang. So that follow through should last till about Friday morning, in my opinion. Now, um, also keep in mind that uh, the 15th, this year the 15th fell on a Monday. I mean, sorry, on a Saturday, right? Remember the mid-month uh, blues? So you generally get plus minus two days around the 15th when things are the most volatile. And that pretty much was the case here again. So till the 17th, very volatile, and then we are past those two days of, from the 17th. These are day counts I've seen uh, repeat themselves a lot. And today's the 19th, and, and the market's basically, at least the Dow Jones basically uh, decided to, you know, just blast through. So this is also looking fine. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ, where a lot of our tech stocks are. So here's the story of the NASDAQ. Um, if you notice, it's a far more of an algorithmic chart than the S&P chart. This is your NASDAQ, which includes the big techs that we trade, the biotechs that we generally swing, and um, and this is what it looks like. It's not a very difficult read so far. It's showing that the crossover up, as we call it, on the stoves are, are intact. Just keeping things kind of like, you know, easy. Um, this was a pattern that I detected in August. That's why I put these boxes here. Every time the NASDAQ took a real dump, where all those bozos on TV came on and said, okay, this is it, valuations are too high, you know, Netflix can't sign up any more members, Apple's phones all suck, you know, the same old stuff you keep on hearing. Tesla's going to be out of business because they can't, you know, their cars don't have wheels, uh, you got to use zero cell batteries because their batteries are so crappy, you know, one after another, you hear so much crap on that company, you know, it's inc incredible. Does anyone see Bob Lust on uh, the XGM guy? Who's a, who's a, he himself openly says he's the ultimate Tesla hater, like a real hater. He'd probably shoot Elon Musk if he, if he saw him. What he said yesterday, and just replay it back. It's on CNBC, the interview. I was laughing because, I mean, he's always pissing on Tesla anyway, of course, because Tesla's a direct threat uh, to the old line companies. 
play. What did he say yesterday, which was just out of control? He basically called the death of Tesla, and he said that people are going to look back and create a movie which says Tesla died. Who killed Tesla? I'm like this is this guy's just like losing it. But that's it. It's a free world. Say whatever you want. And then what does the stock do? It goes up uh, twenty points from where I called it yesterday, or more. End of story. I have nothing more to say. So, all right. So this is this. If this uh, pattern uh, uh, goes through, uh, what we are starting to see develop. Let me zoom in, and this is going to affect all techs, apples, and the worlds included, right? Um, it should do this. It's done it every single time. We have had a major sell-off. So it should at least attempt to cross over the 7600 level which means we should get a big bump on amazon netflix we already got the bump pull back and the day flat big bump on google apple in the following 24 to 48 hours based on previous patterns this is the pattern i'm looking at this was back in uh, 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 end of june very similar to what is going on right now now, what was end of June? It was the end of the second quarter. You know, there's always a reason. It's end of the second quarter. So this was the end of the second quarter. And now we are going into the end of the third quarter. This bump arrived on June. It, this was a sell-off till June 27th. Pattern recognition is key in technical analysis, and I try to really specialize in pattern recognition. You know, it's like CIA, FBI work. You know, you you, you, you decipher a pattern, and you try. Then you then you you know then you can explain a lot of things. What goes on? So this was June twenty uh, June twenty seventh, June twenty eighth, June twenty ninth, and then. This was obviously, you know, uh, going into the, the, the first trading day of, of the next month, which was the 2nd of July. So we are right in that kind of pattern right now. So if I'm using this and I'm just looking at it, you know, so I, I can see the pattern, not that it's going to exactly going to happen. But if this does happen, you're going to see a big burst on the text this week and the early part of next week going into the end of the month. Does there, is everyone with me on that? Yes? Yes. Okay. Sounds good. Um, the Qs. Could you please pull up the chart on the Q? It had two inside days. It appears to be setting up for a move. Yes, I'll pull it up right now. One second. You, know, you kind of, yeah, Frank, you, ju you kind of just went over it for me with the USTEC here, so I... Yeah, but I'm going to pull up the cues because I saw I I have been tracking the cues on the on the quad system, but I haven't seen it on this one. So let me see Thanks. How, how it looks. That's another thing, uh, guys, that I in my experience would have seen that when you look at charts on different platforms. For example, I use Thinkorswim, I use um, uh, uh, Investing.com, I use Quad, and I use Warden TC2000, which I don't really post from much, but I will start doing that. Okay. Uh, and uh, I was on Warden TC2000 for a while, and then I stopped, and then I kind of resubscribed back and paid for the whole year and just got it because that's that's a fantastic system too, very easy on the eyes. You guys are familiar with that, right? The, you know, the Warden uh, uh, TC2000. Any of you? I haven't used it in a long time, but yeah, I'm familiar but with it. Okay, good. Yeah. It, it, it's a free download. You can do it. You don't get real-time data, but it's it's really it's very cool. And one of my screens, I, I have it on, and I'll be posting charts from there, too. I primarily use that to see the actual candle movements, you know. Just like, come on, is Alibaba waking up? You know, is it dead completely? You know, did they shoot all the Alibaba and the 40 Thieves? So those, those candles are just very, very clear. So one of my 27 in screens... I uh, I have it on. I'm looking at it right now on the right. It's not on this computer, so I can't show it to you guys. It's very clear, so I can detect 
these initial movements very, very quickly. And that's primarily what I use it for. I have a whole bunch of charts, you know, just left open there during the day. So let's take a look at the cues. Um, so what I was going to say was when you look at things on different planets, different charts, you start to see, you know, they, they look different. So what does that mean? That means that I have a much better macro view and, uh, and, and get a better bird's eye view on what is going on because they each look slightly different than each other, even though the parameters are the same. Same price, the same volumes, same companies, but they look different. And it, 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 it's easier for me to make a determination. And if two of them, three of them are, 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 are signaling the same type of pattern look, I'm like, that's it, you know, go for it. So let's take a look at the cues on the daily. It's a messy chart, if you ask me, okay? Because this can be construed as a, uh, this is certainly still a head and shoulder. Here's your head, uh, here are your left shoulders, and here is your right shoulder. So here's your neckline. And, uh, and here is the upper end. So bottom line is in between is our playground. We're not making a determination that the, this is if they're going to go all the way up here. If that's the case, then Apple's going to go back to 230. It can certainly pull the market higher, you know, just the queues higher big time. Um, or Google can go back to 12, uh, 1230. And uh, um, I'm talking about the big heavyweights. And Amazon hits 2000. What was Amazon's high? We traded so much, I don't even remember the highs. 2050, wow. So it's down 125 points from where it was. Good. So basically, for these, these things can happen if, if uh, the big cap movers on the queues uh, take off. Now, saying all that, this is still a head and shoulder pattern. So we play in between. So what I'm looking at is that we, we, we close at 182.70. Um, let's say we make a move up here. We get roughly uh, 184. Just to retest the right shoulder, we get roughly around 184.72. I'll take two points on the queues. That's a lot of money. So that's if you're, if you're looking at it from a swing standpoint. Um, so this needs to basically negate just the way we negated the right shoulder on the S&P. The, the queues have to negate the right shoulder on the, on the end queues and the, and the NDX. And for that to happen, the queues need to basically get above. The, the, the queues need to, because we're looking short term here. Hold on. The queues basically need to do this, get up to the 185 zone. At the 185 zone, it basically needs to pull in one of those breadth thrust big time moves up here so that uh, all the negative talk about the tax breaking down and stuff like that is negated. So we're not there yet, but there's a lot of money to be made from, these, from this point. In the meantime, it can certainly come down and retest 180 again, in which case we have to go short on a few things, especially this, you know, with the queues, um, because that means the techs are going to go in for a real dropping. I highly doubt that, given the stage in the market we're in right now, end of the quarter and stuff like that, because all these stocks have performed very well during the quarter, and I'm sure the fund managers want to buy them on the cheap side because they're down, like Amazon's down 125 points on the highs, and, and will prop them up in their books. So I don't think we're going to do this, but anything can happen, right? So we just want to keep that in mind. Now, saying all that, if I just do a rough sketch, the uptrend is still very much in place, and we are bouncing off. So if it does this, then Lisa, your thesis about a sharp bounce, which I agree with too, is very correct. Does that make sense? Yep, I okay. like it. Okay, sounds good. Because sometimes you know you just draw it back of the napkin. That's a back of the napkin sketch. You know, you don't need to do too much yep. thinking. And it's just like okay, came down here at the bottom of the channel, should have a bounce. But we have to be, you know. Uh, so that's it. Um, let's take a uh, let's take a look at. Um, a couple of charts. Uh, one of the charts that we're trading very actively is Micron. So this is uh, what we're looking at. Um, Lisa was mentioning about a straddle. I think that's totally fine. Um, I did see that $70 thing. I'll dig it out and post it. 
I think I posted it about the $70 price target that was put in place. But I really don't go by analyst price targets, just the way David Tepper, who's the, one of the ultimate fund managers, even though he's been short pretty much all year, like he said, he loves Micron. And uh, I think that carries a lot of weight. So let's pull up Micron here, what I'm looking at. Uh, the stock has delivered some nice gains for us, and it's got a long way to go. So this is the semi, it is semi stock. Hold on. And it is possible that they might talk about some softness on the semi side, right? So then, you know, the algos come in hard because semis move up and down big time. This is what I'm looking at. This gap really truly feels like a magnet. That's around 48. So if it pops up two or three bucks and then they start selling it, I'll tell you one thing. If they move this stock up three bucks from here, that's what? That's about 8% or so? Something like that. Seven or 8%? That's a lot. Right there, they're going to start selling. Um, right there, they're going to start selling. I'm talking just right after earnings. The other, the uh, so it's very important that you that literally print this chart or screenshot it so it's right there in front of you if you're trading Micron because this chart has done very well for me, very well for me. Looking at this down downtrending channel, it's very much on a downtrend right now with halfway up. This is fine. This generally has been moving back of the napkin stuff again, like this. So if it gets to the upper end of this, this magenta line here, the channel, then you get to the gap. So that's the, you know, that's what my short term target is. I mean, we've been trading the stock all the way from the low 40s. And uh, so, so, and then again, the calls are cheap, so what they do is they run the stock up because this stock moves fast, right? If it's up 60 cents in the morning, your options are going to be up about 30%. They move it fast, then they kind of slide it down. That's exactly what they did today. Now, this slide down wasn't just because of Micron. It's because that big sell program came in on the NASDAQ and brought everything down. We know that. So uh, from a technical standpoint, from a candlestick formation standpoint, nothing's wrong. It's trending higher. You had one, two, three, four, uh, one, two, three, four. Green candles, you had one red candle. I'll take that. On a good earnings report, on good guidance, and here's the other piece of news. September 24th, which is next week, Micron starts their two plus billion dollar buyback. And that's when they when they set the date. So if the stock falls after earnings, I'm gonna be an aggressive buyer based on my charts. This is the chart that I'm following. This chart goes back to February of this year. Remember what was in February of this year, right? The big, fat, ugly crash. So Micron in 2018, in February, while the market was crashing in the month of February, right after the January run-up, did not, did not follow the market. It went straight up. And then the pullback came in the month of uh, March. This is what I'm looking. See that big candle? There's my support, 3740. I know that seems like a long way off, but based on my charts here, the first level of major support comes into play at 4063. So if after earnings, I see a sharp move down here into the 40 level, and seeing uh, by uh, you know the, some stability or by you know some sort of short covering uh, uh, stuff coming in, or if um, I don't think it slips seven dollars, if that's the case, that means the semi uh, uh, semiconductor sector is in real deep crap doo doo. It'll take down every. It'll take down the socks, the semiconductor index. It'll be literally a full fledged Armageddon crash on the semiconductor side, pulling all techs down. If if Micron falls seven dollars. Just so you guys know, that means something horrible happened out there. I highly doubt that. So, on a pullback, I I, I can see the stock down about uh, you know uh, four five dollars. I would be a buyer here because their stocks fall. Their buyback starts on the twenty fourth or so. You think they're just going to sit around and watch their stock pummel down? No. So they will be buying heavy. It'll be a great opportunity to do that. Of course, you know, we will. Uh, I'll certainly adjust my uh, 
thesis as we move along. But looking at the overall picture without getting too analytical, here's the channel. Upper end of this channel is the gap. The two reasons why it should be a magnet. We already talked about the fact that if on a bad, bad earnings report, the stock should find a strong floor at that 40 level and then start to make a move. If it's a really good earnings report, then it'll hit the upper end of the breakdown, the onset of the breakdown, which is 51, which happens to be the broader channel, this one. See the red, red line? There. There. So in my opinion, there's a lot of potential here. A little bit of a, a straddle would be fantastic. I do not see Armageddon in this stock primarily because it is down so much. This is not a stock that's completely overvalued. In fact, on a fundamental basis, it is one of the cheapest semiconductor stock that's out there. And that's one of the reasons David Tepper, hedge fund extra, uh, extraordinaire, loves the stock so much. And there's a lot of other people like that too. Micron is a value stock. Okay, it's a value stock. The PEs are in the single digits. This is not a, a super expensive, you know, this is not a pot stock. How about that? So real company, real earnings. So that's what I'm looking at on Micron. I like Avago a lot. A couple of stocks here. Oh, Roku. Yeah, it was down today. And uh, But look at the chart. On a swing basis, the stock is going to go to 77, and then it's going to go to hit, hit, hit 80. So when you look at a pattern like this, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. All right? So it, it's – this one is – oh, that was a doji star bearish. Okay. Um, look at that. It hit the low. No, no, with options – cheap options so they fell um the options fell about 40 percent today at the close from yesterday technically it's a bull flag just want you guys to understand that based on you know how things work on the daily it's a swing trade we've been swing trading roku for a while sometimes i'm in it sometimes i'm not but generally speaking all the way from the 40 level i've been in the stock a lot and it's a good looking stock. It wants to go higher. Somewhere in the 78, 80 level. And the calls are very cheap. So I like this a lot. Um, Amazon. Look what they did at the end of the day. Massive buy program. Look at the size of that candle. Does this mean the stock's going to get, you know, gap open all the way here? No. Who knows? It might. I mean, we've seen that happen with Amazon a lot. Here's my uh, trading. These are my trading charts. So this one is uh, 1935. Stock closed at 1925, 26. It can easily open up at 1935. The calls we bought at two and change, cost average for all the way down to I think two dollars and so. They closed at uh, they closed at uh, the 1960s. They closed at four. Yeah, they closed close to four. I'll take it. So what a bunch of them, nothing crazy, but uh, they really pay the bills. This is market conditions withstanding. This is a beautiful. We've traded this so many times. But if you're not a buyer here, very difficult to be chasing the stock up here. So this this is this is, this is a three candle move. This is the first candle, second candle would develop, even if it opens down. Remember, candles don't pile up on each other. That's another thing I want traders to understand. Very important and simple concept. Even on a big move up, right? Even on a big move up, candles don't go like this. Oh, here's a candle. Great. Next day, it starts and starts running all the way up. No, it doesn't work like that. Candles don't pile up on each other. Candles go up. They pull back a little bit. Then as next candle develops, and you can see that clearly. Beautiful candle, pull back. And these pullbacks are six, seven, eight points. Goes higher, opens the next day, pulls back a little bit, goes higher. Closes here, pulls back again, bang, goes higher, pulls back again, three, four dollars. This is how things work. And then the final capitulation, panic buying, is where this happens. So when traders extinct a panic in the first part of the morning, because here's a beautiful candle. So the stock, let's say, opens lower a little bit. 
three, four bucks lower, five bucks lower. Within a matter of the first hour, the next candle starts developing. So if you're not positioned around these levels, not necessarily today, let's say candles developing tomorrow, I'm like, okay, we're buying this, it's breaking out of this uh, downtrend channel, more like a fall, uh, falling wedge, then you keep on missing these monster trades. When this candle happened, the stock went to, let's look, at, look on the right-hand side, the stock went to the high of the day, what was the price? Somebody tell me, quick. Right here, the top of the wick, what was the high of the day? Somebody please answer, please, because this is important for all of you guys. Looks like 1945. That's right, 1945-75. Let's call it 1946. It ended the day at 1941, right? So four points it gave back. The next morning, what, what was the uh, low of the day? 1940. That's right. So bottom line is that it, 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 this one was a mild drop, but somebody might say, oh, wow, if the, next, if the previous day's high was 1946. Now it's at 1940. Um, this, was, this is not a really good example, or oh, this is a good example. So you get this candle move here, okay? Big candle move. The stock, look on the right-hand side. The stock went goes as high as 1952, ends the day very uh, fantastic, you know, a bullish engulfing candle, especially a real bullish engulfing where it opens lower and then bursts loose. Those are the first things that those these are the most powerful candles ever. Big time short covering, and and the body of the candle is nothing but billions of dollars sitting into it. So the next morning, the stock go uh, uh, opens lower. What's the price here on the right, Dave? Uh, anyone, I'm sorry. It closed at 1948. Look at the price on the right, 1926. Thank you. Okay, that's 20 points lower. And then it creates a doji. But everything is confirming on the stoves that it's going higher. So the next more, you know, it, it, it opens higher probably. And uh, uh, or lower, I can't really tell what time it was at 1926. But the bottom line, the low of the day was 1926. So what I'm getting at, without getting you know, I'm spending too much time on this, candles don't pile up on each other. And traders love. I mean, I would love to see a price that I buy that it it never retouches it. Of course, I'd like to see that every day. It doesn't work like that. So candles don't pile up. They go here, they pull back a little bit, create another candle, pull back. And you use them as buying opportunities. We, we, the simplest way to track it is your stores and all the other different indicators that I show. So putting this together, this is if this is a three candle move, it's going to bust a move right above this downtrend line, which is approximately around 1934. It's going to bust a move, create the third candle, and by Friday, it should be testing the gap. It's done it many, many times. So that's 1960. I bought the 1960, and I, uh, uh, I think I said 1940 in the 1960 calls, or the 1960, 1980s. Whichever the case, you're gonna make money because my ones are already almost uh, uh, up 70% at the close, 60 to 70%. I have the 1960 calls, and the 1980 calls were at a dollar 50 at the close, and during the day it was uh, as low as 82 cents. So that was almost a double two. So that's it. Um, what are the charts are here? I don't want to spend too much time. There's Micron on the hourly chart. This is a different view. I'm tracking this too. There's nothing wrong with this. Absolutely nothing. This is the big fat red line, 4364. We don't want it to go below that because if it does go below that, the stock's going to fall to 42. So this is your hourly trading chart. Very well drawn. Gaps, gaps, gaps. Candles in very good shape. If the NASDAQ hadn't pulled back, Micron would have closed today at the higher end where it opened up today at 9 o'clock. It opened up at 45.90. The stock would have been at 46.48. And that would have been short-term overbought. See that? So if you want to look at this as a pattern, this is an inverse head and shoulder. Look. There. 
on good news, the stock can climb up to the 48 to $49 level where it broke down from back on the 6th of September. This is a good looking pattern, technically speaking. So far, everything is compliant. So that's it. Any others you want me to see? Uh, well, what I have here on the screen, I'll show you. We talked about uh, we talked about Netflix. We talked about oh Alibaba. So Alibaba was being sold like the, the thing was just completely goner. Now it's shaping up to be phenomenal. So we held on from yesterday. We bought a little bit of lows yesterday. The 170 calls, the 180 calls, they all went berserk. The 170 calls for next week were up 178 percent today. And I knew some of you have it. They went from 27 cents to a dollar. It was up 400 percent, but ended the day up at, at at 75 cents. The ones which were the real lottos, which are the 180 calls, which I had a bunch, they went from five cents yesterday to 12 cents. That's more than a double. And they closed the day at around 10 cents. And I have a bunch of them because Alibaba's move is going to be ferocious if it wants to go. And it started the move today. Let's see how far it can go. I don't believe anything till it happens, right? So this chart is starting to look, again, a bear will say big head, right shoulder, left shoulder. That's what a bear would say. Firstly, I don't know. Because the stock is under a lot of pressure. Yeah, Chinese stocks were higher today. So I can't with a high confidence say that the stock was going to bust a move above the right shoulder and get to 170. But if the Chinese stocks have a second or third day of a follow through and there's there's lesser massive tweets and stuff against China coming out and the Chinese markets, I don't know how the Chinese markets are doing right now, um, cooperate then the stock will very easily go to 170 and then to 176, all gaps. So it's a very easy trading chart. This is a, 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 a bull will say this is a massive W. So I would say that I'm a very cautious bull on Alibaba. There. A bull will say, you know what, we're definitely getting up there. And you know what, we can because this is one of the most widely held stocks. It underwent massive trauma, forced margin sellouts, God knows what. Jack Ma in his investor day says we're in a 20-year trade war with America. I'm like, God. I mean, he didn't say it like that. And he basically said if this thing gets worse, it's going to be a long win the trade war. It's not going to end in one day. So they just slap Baba, like nobody's business. Okay. So um, and Jack Ma is a, is a good guy. So it's not like, you know, He's not too dogmatic, even though he said that if this trade war thing continues, he's not going to create those million jobs that he promised Donald when he came to see him. Remember that? I'll say, hey, you know, whatever you want, because the fact is, like, why should he? We're going to keep on pissing on China like no one's business. Uh, then why the hell should he create him one million U.S. jobs? Right. It doesn't make any sense. Just look at it from an impartial standpoint. You know, it's like Trump saying, Donald saying, yeah, I'm going to create a million jobs in China. Uh, which we, which, which you know, which Apple already does anyway. All right. Um, so Frank, this, Frank, I'm ahead. sorry, Frank. Could you could you look at IBB just for as a proxy for the the biotech you know industry because it's really close to its 50. Um, right. Okay, I'll, I'll, it, I'll, I'll do it right now. Let me just show two other charts. You. The most exciting chart we have in here is sick. Slow but steady, but a serious nice winner. Those calls are up, you know, they're up like three, four hundred percent. This is TRXC. I have no idea what's going on. I do track the company. Uh, I think I'm going to, I'm going to uh, uh, put my uh, email on their investor relations thing. So they, I'm sure they have conferences and stuff coming in. This stock has a, technically speaking, at least short term. It's done it before. It's done it as as uh, uh, as uh, recently as. Um, uh, uh, 2014. Well, that's not that recent. So if you really look at it, the last time we were on this price was back in 2014. This is the multi-year breakout that's going on, guys. And at least channel-wise, if we get to the upper end of the range at 11 bucks, you're going you're to make like 2,000% on your calls. So have some size in it. And what I do notice here on this thing um, is all institutional or whatever, whoever's buying. I don't think it's retail. 
or maybe it's retail too, but I doubt it. You don't buy 200 million shares, you know. This is a, this is a, a monthly chart, all institutional buying. Something is going on. When I look at the volume, that's the highest volume I've noticed in the stock ever, aside from this spike here that was back in 2017. So this is really positive. There's a massive accumulation going on on this stock. And remember, this is a bull flag breaking out, and then, uh, and then as, at one point, it does this. All of a sudden. So if you're not in it now, just keep on rolling the calls, October, November. That's all you got to do. This is not a day trade unless it moves really fast and you take it out. Does everyone get me on that? And then and that's that's your longer term chart and here's your shorter term chart, which is equally good looking. Yeah, pretty sexy charts, guys. For a small cap stock, a real company. I used to you know, this is the ISRG Junior, maybe. It's all robotics, medical robotics. This is the bull flag. Breaks out over six seventy, it's gonna be open complete. You know, I don't know what the short position on this stock is. If it's got a nice big short position, they're going to be dead because the stock's going to go straight up to 740. So this is good. Something's going on. Keep an eye on it. Let's take a look at IBB and we're going to uh, end the evening. I haven't looked at IBB in a long time, Lisa. Um, I have the, my basket of, the, uh, of my biotech stocks and we trade some of them here and there. But uh, oh, I don't even have IBB on this. Okay, one thing. Let's take a look at IBB on. It's another company I love, Avago. Look how beautiful this is. The stock's going to 250 and it's going higher. Look at this. Can't beat this type of charts. Just got to stick with it, that's all. And they're going to have the three, four dollar down days. Doesn't matter. All right, let's put up IBB here. I hope, you know, you guys really need to, you know, have some position of Vago, Broadcom, serious stuff going on. Um, this, honestly speaking, is a bad looking chart. Okay. Uh, just by first glance. Why? You got a massive head. You got a massive head. Now, bad looking doesn't mean that's, I'm talking, giving you the macro picture. You got the right shoulder. Big reversal on the right shoulder, where the same thing happened back on 2015. I'm sorry, left shoulder. This is your right shoulder. Here's your neckline. There's your neckline. So bottom line is, unless, and, and, we have a minor crossover of the 34. Let me clean this out. We have, no, these are still separated. Okay, that's fine. But the, the five, the five week, the five day moving average is, um, has still not turned. So short term, we need to basically take out the 118.87 level, which is a 20 day moving average to negate the downtrend that's, that's taking place. So this will be part, and, uh, part of the NASDAQ move because a lot of these uh, uh, on the queues and Qs are biotechs, so we need to basically take out the 118.81 level or the 20-day moving average in order to negate this downtrend. Otherwise, it is not necessarily looking any good. If it breaks 116, it's going to fall all the way down to you know the, the, whatever this level is. So just at just at face value, on the macro picture, it is not good. Now, do we see anything here that excites me? Yeah. You're starting to see a move. So the minute you start to see a crossover, you're going to see a sharp move higher. Now, uh, you see a crossover in the stores, you're going to see a sharp move higher on the biotechs. Now, saying all that, let's take a more uh, a one-hour look. Now, this is more exciting from a trader standpoint. We can see what's going on. We had a massive, right at the bottom, we had a massive buy program. That's, that's a lot, right? Almost, uh, well, 2 million plus. Shares bought. Look at that. What was this? Oh, yesterday. Wow, that was yesterday. No, that was Monday at four o'clock. Somebody bought a bunch, and they're making money. So this is more exciting because now we have a range. We have an inverse head and shoulder. 
inverse, not head and shoulder, inverse, head, left shoulder, right shoulder. Here's your neckline. We bust above the neckline, we're going to make a sharp move higher. We go up to 122.53, that's the daily, that's the daily right shoulder where it's going to find incredible resistance. But the moves from here to here, and if it moves above the neckline, are lots of dollars. So that's the answer to your question, Lisa. So the, the, the hourly is a heck of a lot more exciting than the macro daily longer term picture. Got it? Thank you. Yeah. So this, and, and, you know, be selective on the ones. I mean, there are certain stocks in there which are, which are doing nicely. The Biogen, uh, the ones that I have on my list here, on certain days, you, know, you need the big boys moving. You need the Regenerons, the Lumina being up six, seven, ten bucks, not just giving it back the next morning, like sticking with it. You know, one of those 10 plus days, like three or four days in a row, and everyone's just like, oh my God, I didn't get in, let me get in, you know, and they'd start jumping in. That's the type of movement that you need to see in the big names on the IBB side. Um, all right, guys, uh, any questions from anyone? We're going to wrap this up. No? Okay. All right, so let's uh, let's end the week well. Just keep a very close eye on things. The market's very volatile. You know, it's, it's it's very frustrating. It's very annoying at times. I know it. We're on the boat together, right? And uh, just don't lump into things too much. But when you see things moving, uh, we have played some big-time momentum stocks, whether it be Tillery or NBEV and things like that. Um, you got to go with it. Got to have a position. Run with it. This Tillery thing, I don't know how my charts actually predicted the whole move. It's uh, pretty wild. I got to give it. I got to give it a little pat on my back on that one. Um, wish I had a lot more, but whatever I had was sweet enough. I'll tell you that. Uh, and uh, even traded the drop and the, and the bounce. You know, everything's there on the Twitter feed. So, guys, uh, thank you for attending. Like I always say, get a lot more referrals. We need a lot more leases. We need a lot more DC traders and a lot more. Who's Yvonne? Yvonne, do we know you? Yvonne. Okay. I have no idea who Yvonne is. But it's a nice name. Uh, and I hope you learned something from this webinar. And SARM. So we need a lot more people like you. All right. We'll, um, let's hit some, uh, get some sleep and um, reconnect back tomorrow. Have a great evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good night. Good night. Thank you.